think we're just now waiting for Bob. And, yeah. And is Richard going to be on too? Yeah. Oh. Yes, I'm right here. Good well, morning. Hi, Richard. Hi there. Hi. So, listen, guys, before we go any further, I just want to remind everybody that when that notice was posted, it includes um, this call-in number, so anybody really on the planet, if they saw that notice, they can call in. So, yeah. just okay. be mindful of that in terms of our comments, okay? Sure. Okay. Okay, so who's going to be taking minutes? I will. Okay. So, I think it would be helpful, Maureen, and I'll do this, too. I'm going to take good notes, but... Um, It'd be helpful, too, to note, um, have people identify themselves because of the fact we can't see other people. So okay. We, as far as the minutes go, what do I do with these after I'm, um, do I get them? What do I do? Give them the drone and post them. I, yeah, I, I give, yeah, absolutely. These have to be posted. Correct. Because this is a, this is a commissioner's meeting. Okay. Hello. I will, I will, um, call after this. I'll get a hold of Joni. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Bob. Good morning, everyone. Hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. Good morning, Bob. So, Bob, what, what I just finished uh, announcing to everybody was that um, uh, just be, be mindful of the fact that this um, this call has been posted, or this phone number has been posted, really, so anybody who wants to could call in. So mm -hmm. hopefully people will be identifying themselves if, if members of the public do um, arrive, but just be careful in terms of the fact that this is technically a public meeting, just yes. just happens to be being done on the phone. Yeah, yeah. So now where has this notice been posted? Chuck, where was it posted? Uh, Lighthouse Patriot oh. and uh, the town offices and online on the Village District website, and then other people have shared it online. Okay. Maureen, could you, could you please note back in a minute the, the, the locations of the posting? Okie doke. Okay. So, um, I, I think um, if, if you guys want, I mean, I don't mean to be jumping. Hello? Yeah, yes. yes. Oh, I thought, we had, right. I thought we had somebody else joining us. Maybe not. Um, so, I, I thought, I, I, if you guys don't mind, I'll just kind of get the ball rolling here to go over some housekeeping things and, and you know, just discuss how the order of things that we're going to be discussing and um and this is the part for richard and, and maureen's benefit too because they were not part of the um, discussion with council the other day so the first order of business is that this is the first time i know i have and presumably you guys have too done one of these um public meetings which is authorized by statute to be done electronically and which does not require a physical quorum of the commissioners but in order for us to be able to validly um, do that, um, we need to affirm in the minutes that based upon the, the, the statute um, that there is an emergency basis for which the uh, commissioners don't need to be physically present. And so I know that we, and, who, I, and I apologize, I can't even remember, who is, Chuck, are you still the chairman or is it Bob? No, I am. Okay. Chuck's chairman for life. Chuck is chairman for life. <laughs> so, so, Chuck, I'm, I'm going to um, just mention a couple of, of um, items that I think that you may want to contemplate as being the basis of having this um, meeting in which you don't need to be physically present and uh, just indicate whether or not you agree with those reasons or if you have others, and then that will become, that will be noted in the minutes as we're holding this meeting um, uh, by phone rather than in person, okay? Yes, that's fine. All right, so the, a couple of the reasons that I think that um, would be the basis of having this meeting on the phone as we are doing is that number one, there are a series of federal and state orders um, out there right now which encourage everyone to be use the social distancing and that those orders are particularly important when we have older people who are 60 and above. And I think that um, with the possible exception of Chuck, who is just a baby, um, <laughs> all, of, all of us are over 60. Um, Thank you for the reminder. Right. Listen, we're all itching beautifully. Because, yeah, it doesn't matter how old you are, how good you look, Maureen. That's right. Yeah, yeah. You don't look a day over 70, Maureen. Right. Thanks so much. Right. And 
um, so that's you know that's sort of the baseline. And then the second thing is is that nothing is really going to change or unlikely to change between now and March 27th in terms of the operation of those those uh, various orders. And that we need to have a meeting, a discussion, in order to uh, address now how the annual meeting will be operating and, and the potential for rescheduling. We can't wait until after those orders are rescinded. Um, and then the third thing is that by virtue of this, this um, conference line that we're utilizing right now <coughs> and the, the notices that were posted, um, it's possible to have a pretty pretty smooth um, public meeting. Uh, it just happens to be on the phone rather than in person. So, uh, Chuck, if you are agreeable to all of those um, concepts, or unless you have any additional reasons, I think that that would be the basis for you to indicate, um, or that could be the basis for you to indicate legitimately that an emergency basis exists to have the meeting um, held by phone and not in person. So, do you agree with that? I okay. um, I love the way I just worked. Yeah. Okay. 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 So um, somebody is breathing heavy into the phone. So if you're breathing, hold the hold the. Uh, yeah, I, was, I, I, didn't want, I didn't want to say that, Chuck. I'm glad that you Not me. Not right. me. Okay, Bob, you you're you're the default guy. Put your mask. Okay. On. All right. It's not me either. It's a ghost. Okay. Um. All right, so um, then I guess the next item is the uh, issue about whether whether the annual meeting is going to be postponed. And um, Richard and Maureen, and Richard, I don't know to what extent you may have been reading anything online in terms of moderator duties or anything. So let me, I'm just going to kind of very quickly give you a Reader's Digest of what I've done to date. Um, so there, there are two statutes, Richard, which allow you, yes. as the moderator, to be able to postpone this. You're probably very familiar with them. And, Go ahead. And the reason for this um, meeting is that um, the statute um, requires, hang on, where did I see this now? Um, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, to the extent practical, prior to making a decision, the moderator shall consult with the governing body. And so that's what we're doing right now. That's what we're doing now, right. Yeah, and so we're just having a consultation with the governing body for you to describe, you know, if, if you were the governing body and had a chance to talk with either the police or the fire or the emergency services uh, person over in town to see what their thoughts are um, about holding the meeting next week as opposed to postponing it. Um, and all, all of this, I mean, the, the bottom line question under the statute is whether the, the, um, the, uh, the meeting location would be unsafe. So, um, and, and, and also in the context of, of the governor's orders about, you know, can't have public meetings uh, greater than, than, than 50, and that does include civic or public gatherings. So I, I thought what we do right now, and Maureen, if you could take some notes, and I'll do that too. Um, Richard, I mean, this, this is your call. I mean, it's not the governing body, it's your call. But but why don't we just have the, you know, you indicate what your thoughts are, and then uh, the commissioners can weigh in. And, and then I'm going to go, because I, I have some additional information. There was a, there was a conference call as of yesterday, um, which I can fill you in, and that included the Attorney General's office. But I think first is a threshold matter, before we start talking about when things could be rescheduled to or anything like that, Let's just have a discussion right now to get a consensus as to whether or not um, Richard feels that this, the, uh, both the voting and the business section of the meeting should be postponed. So, Richard, what do you think? All right, Sharon. Uh, I agree that uh, because of the situation with the, uh, the coronavirus, that it would be prudent for us to postpone this meeting. Uh, because of the, of the close proximity of people coming in to, to vote and being in contact with the ballot clerks, uh, I don't think it would be prudent to uh, have that take place. Plus, uh, the possibility of, it may not happen, but what, what did you say, that the maximum allowed social contact is, what, 50 people? We probably would not have 50 people, but I'd rather be on the uh, side of caution 
uh, to avoid that situation. Yeah. So my suggestion would be that if it is all possible that we postpone the actual the actual voting portion of our meeting and also the uh, postpone the actual voting on the warrant articles to whatever dates are uh, uh, feasible for those two sessions. Okay. Um, do you guys as commissioners have anything else that you want to add to that? Yeah, I think that uh, one of the things we could stipulate is non-voting, uh, other than council, of course, non-voting people or citizens uh, should not be allowed at the meeting. So the select men, the people from in town and everything else, and the newspaper guy, everything else, if we can limit that, then we're definitely going to limit the numbers. Last year, we had more people that couldn't vote than, than could. It's going to be televised, so obviously they would be allowed there. But uh, so if anybody wants to see it, they could they could they could be televised. I don't know if we need the selectmen that that aren't still as district members there. I don't think we need Max Sullivan there. I don't think we you know that. So that, that's something I was thinking about. That would keep the numbers down. And Chuck, you're referring to the business section of the meeting where, whereby the Warren articles are voted on. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't see, well, I'm, I'm trying to divide this into two areas. As far as the actual voting for the candidates, my understanding that's going to take place on April 7th. Is that correct? No, there's been no decisions that have been made at all, Richard. That was just the number we threw out. Oh, all right. We haven't made that decision yet. Okay. You but anyway, uh, we're still going to operate in, in two separate situations, right? That for one situation, uh, one uh, event will be the actual voting for the commissioners uh, and the, the, the uh, village offices that really won't change at all. We'll just conduct that the same way we always have been from uh, one to seven. And then at a different date, we will have another session for the voting on the budget warrant articles. Is that correct? Well, Richard, just to clarify, the statute yeah. doesn't really mandate that you do any any postponement in any particular fashion. Um, you may end up, for practical reasons, deciding to do it that way, but it's not a mandate. Just so you you know, just so that you're clear on that. Okay. All right. So then maybe we should just do it all this, all together in May. Sometime. What does everybody think? Well, so, and, let, and Chuck, I've got some more in, in information too in terms of the, the timing of all this. But but um, so let's not let's not just you know jump to any conclusions yet about the May date. But but yeah, I mean, Maureen and Bob, what what do you guys think about first of all post the concept of postponing in general? I don't I think, think this is Maureen. I don't think we have much choice. I think the governor has made that decision for us. And uh, if there were to be more than 50 people, we'd have a problem. So I think we need to postpone the meeting, number one. As far as voting, I'm not sure. I'm not really sure what to do about that. My concern is April 7th is too close to really have a good sense as to how the virus is going to play out. <laughs> Yesterday, California just basically ordered everyone in the state to stay home. We don't know where we're heading in this. Uh, and April 7th may be right in the heart of the worst of it. Uh, so if, if it's a matter, do you believe that the voting and the business meeting should be postponed? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. yes, I agree. Okay. So it sounds as if everyone is in agreement um, based upon safety concerns. And I think, you know, Richard, you, you put it, well, but, you know, if you're concerned in particular about the, the, the voting aspect of this, the close proximity numbers, and the, the, um, the issue with the ballot works being nearby, et cetera, et cetera, um, that, 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 you know, it, it doesn't, it's not safe, right, basically. Um, and also that, you know, it's possible that there might be an excess of 50 people there before they the governor's orders. So then, then the question becomes this. So what, what happened was that yesterday, in terms of when this might be rescheduled to, 
Um, a conference call was held, at which point a, a, a member of the Attorney General staff was present, uh, indicated that, that um, the decision, while it's perfectly okay to do what we're doing right now, and that is to have a discussion on a conceptual level as to whether or not either the voting or the business session should be postponed, the actual decision itself and the communication of that fact uh, has to, can't be done right now. Uh, we have to do that uh, no sooner than 40, in other words, two days prior to the time of the actual session. Uh, okay, would you repeat that again? I, I'm not sure I understand. Yes, you've been a little, a little garbled, Sharon. Yeah, I know, I, again, I know. Please. I know. I'm, I'm gonna. I gotta pick this up again because I was trying to read the statute. It's hard. It's hard. Okay. So, so let me just do this again. So, yeah. so I think number one, just to, to, we've all pretty, or you guys have all pretty much concluded and communicated to Richard, and he seems to be uh, in agreement with this, that the voting and the business session of the meeting should be postponed from March 27th. Yeah. Um, and so yes. the conference call of yesterday um, indicated via the attorney general's office that they, they are clarifying the statute to indicate that while you can make that conceptual decision right now, that you can't make it with any finality until um, at most two days prior to the, the, the business session and no sooner than the day before for the voting. And I guess the reason, you know, presumably that language is in there because Typically, this, these postponements come up due to things like snowstorms and whatnot. They don't come up mm -hmm. to, in, in relationship yeah, right. to pandemics. So no one has ever had to do anything that, like this. But their position is that it's pretty clear that we couldn't – say, for example, at the end of this meeting, Richard couldn't call up the AG and say we're going to postpone to X date. Richard right. is going to have to wait until next – really next Wednesday, two days before um, the – uh, business session to contact the attorney general's office and let them know that. Um, yeah. And as to the voting, that can be done no sooner than uh, the 26th. And again, the notice has to go out. So I guess um, I, I guess that, you know what we can do at this point is in the, these minutes to indicate that, and this is how I think you get the word out to, to people, is that a meeting was held in which the commissioners provided input to um, uh, the moderator. The moderator is under the belief, based upon the information available at this time, that the both the voting and the, the business session of the meeting should be postponed from March 27th but that a final determination of that will be made on, and I can write all this out for you. Yeah, you would. That a final determination on that question will be made on uh, March 20, 25th regarding, actually, you know what, we should probably do it all at once. Cause people all, get all at the same time, yeah. Yeah, make it on March 26th. A final decision will be made at that time as to whether or not the, um, both the business meeting and the voting will be postponed, and on that uh, at that time, there will be an indication as to when um, the voting and the business session will be uh, postponed to. Um, so the other kind of wrinkle in all this is that, and I mentioned this to Chuck and and um, and uh, and Bob the other day, in terms of the, the in terms of rescheduling the the business session of the meeting. That's, that's, you can kind of do whatever you want to with that, within reason, of course. You want to get it done as quickly as possible to vote on the budget. But with regard to the voting, technically, that's, that's supposed to be done by statute, the way it's written, uh, by April 7th. Now, I don't necessarily know how that's going to work out, if the, and I think we're going to have to phrase it such, in order to comply with the statute, I think ultimately we're going to end up rescheduling until that date, but subject to any future orders coming out from the governor. Because if the governor extends his order to, say, May 7th or whatever, we're going to need to follow the lead of the governor. So as it stands now, we could have the voting on the 27th and just not 
let a group of people come in. I, I don't quite follow how you're going to do that, Chuck. I mean, you, well, you, I mean, you could limit the amount of people that come into the voting area. So maybe we don't have to cancel that one. Well, I, I think that, and again, this is going to be, that's one thought. It's going to be Richard's call. But if, you know, re remember that the, the driver of this thing is not solely the governor's order. It's also the, the social distancing issue, the, I mean, I think it's a practical matter if you get a lot of absentee ballots. Um, you know, if, you, if you were to get all absentee ballots, you might be able to pull this off. Right. Might because you'd still have to have some kind of social interaction with the ballot clerks counting the ballots and that kind of stuff. But my, my, I guess the issue that you're going to need to, to consider is, um, or that the moderator is going to consider, would be, I would say, the following things. Number one, what happens to the people that don't have absentee ballots currently? How do you right. get those to them? How do they then deliver those? Who's going to pick all this stuff up timely and all that sort of thing? And if you have sort of a, a deficit for all sorts of logistical and practical reasons of people being able to vote on an absentee basis, I think that the likelihood is that you're going to get a pretty low turnout of people wanting to physically appear to vote. Right. They're just not going to show up. And then so the concern would be raised that um, somehow that the decision to go forward with the voting um, interfered with people's ability to appropriately exercise their voting rights. Okay. So, what that was the deadline on April the 7th to get an absentee ballot? Pardon me? What's the deadline on April 7th to get an absentee ballot? I don't know off the top of my head. Um, well, I'd have to look at the, yeah. uh, I don't know, you know, moving the date up. The point being that if, let's say, our, our regular meeting was the 27th, you had to get your absentee ballot back to the clerk by that date. So moving it up to the 7th, I don't know what the, you know, what the calendar time frame is. Thing, but to probably get one, they need, if they want one mailed out, they have to have it. Yeah, the, the question, I mean, you have to deliver it by the, by the, by the, by the time when the, the, the whatever the, the, the deadline is that we have in that, that statutory deadline thing that I. I by, five, by, by five, by five o'clock on the 27th, as it stands now. Right. You know. So we would be five o'clock on April 7th. The question that Chuck is raising, and I just don't know off the top of my head, is when what what would be the deadline by which people would have to pick up the absentee ballots? Oh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you'll have to ask the clerk that. Whatever it is now, it's probably the same thing backwards, right? Let's see, that moves it up what just two weeks, right? Right. Yeah. I don't know. I'd, I'd have to look at the time calendar, the time frame. I'm not sure. And and this is Maureen. I just wanted to say that. Also, you have to make sure these people know how they're going to get the absentee ballot. People who have never gotten one before, that's going to take them time as well. Right. I mean, I don't think there's enough time for them to figure out how to get it, to get the word out how to get it, to get it, and to return it in two weeks. And, and Maureen, the, your comments are in conjunction with, with what? With having a, a vote on the 7th or with regard to, to what? <laughs> uh, the 7th. Uh, I mean, if, if, if that's what we wanted to do, I'm not, uh, by FCT, I'm not sure there's time in two weeks to do all of that by April 7th. Yeah, there is time for that. There's no time for the 27th, but the 7th, I think, was good. To get the FCT? She's already got it printed, I'm sure. Well, well that's a lot of people. The way, they get the, absentee, the way that they obtain the absentee ballot is to call Uda, the clerk, right. and she would send out an absentee ballot to them, and it would be then up to the recipient to get that ballot back to right. her by, the, by 5 o'clock. Right. Okay, I, I guess my next question then is, how are you going to get all of the, uh, that information to all of the people who might want one? Well, wouldn't it be up to the individual to decide? Well, all right, I'm going. I want an absentee ballot. I'll call. I'll call the clerk and get one. 
No, she's talking about how you educate people in general about this whole situation, about the postponement and how they were to go about getting an absentee ballot. I mean, I, my thought would be that some sort of a joint writing would be issued by the commissioners and the moderator um, explaining that the, I mean, the, 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 ex, the issue about the postponement would be done by the moderator, but then there would be a separate, um, some separate narrative about the, from both the commissioners and the moderator to indicate that in anticipation of a rescheduled vote, th these are the options that people have. They can vote by absentee, and I'm looking at the statute even as we speak, um, or they can come in in person. So I, I think that that's going to require, you know, some additional writing that's going to need to be posted publicly and then also online. And then you're also going to have to supplement it as best you can, word of mouth, and it's it's going to be imperfect. Somebody's not going to find out, and they'll be moaning okay. and carrying on. But and honestly, we have, um, it's not that many people that are registered to vote. We probably can get in touch with everybody. Yeah. Maybe we do a mailer. Yeah. I mean, now we're pressing time, too. Send out a mailer on um, the 26th. They'll get it for the weekend. And then they have time to get get a, get a uh, absentee ballot if they want. Well, remember, they also have to know that they're not coming in on the 27th for those brave people who thought they were coming. We need well, we to... Can't announce it. We, have, we can't officially announce it until the 26th. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, but we can, an issue, we, no, it? but we can put people on notice that yeah. this is likely going to be coming. I mean, yeah. I think you get that word out pretty quickly. Yeah. Right. But for the mailer, we're not going to put that in the mailer. No. But I definitely think no, the mailer. Chuck, are you talking, about, you talking about the mailing to all the registered voters of the precinct? Yeah, there's not that many. No, I'm just, I'm just asking. Right? Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. It won't, it wouldn't, it's not like we're sending out 12,000 of them. We're only going to send out 100. No, no. Uh, I'm not quite sure how many we have. Yeah, Irene would know that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, would it be just limited to the registered voters, or how about people in the precinct who could register up until the day of the election? How would they be notified? We just have to post it. Hopefully they see it. We can put it on 20, channel 22. We can post it um, and go from there. Put it in the paper? Yeah, put it in the paper. And my other thought is any notice should probably infer that the new date, the 7th, may not occur either. Right, it's going to have to. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I mean, quite honestly, quite honestly, Bob, to answer that question, if, if, um, if it's less than 50 people come uh, gathered together at one time on April 7th, and we monitor that by saying to people, you know, you need to go, because they're going to want to be distancing, hopefully they're paying attention. Um, wouldn't that, couldn't that occur on April 7th? Unless it he could. says nobody can go anywhere. Is that what you mean? We have two conflicting numbers now, the 50 number and the federal government suggested yeah. number of 10. We don't know what any of those numbers will actually be because what they're saying is around April 7th may the, be the peak of the medical crisis. Yeah, okay. And it might be like California, nobody can go anywhere. Yeah, they may shut down. I see what you're saying. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I doubt very much, you know, <laughs> we, in the past we've never had more uh, in excess of, well, maybe 15 or 20 people at any given time, you know, but. Like you say, they they could say ten, you know. And, you know, you, you got you got uh, two supervisors, the checklist. You got four ballot clerks. You got the clerk, myself, and a few other people. We could easily go over to ten. Maybe not get to the fifty, but I'm sure we could go over to ten very yeah. easily yeah. at any given time. And then you have, like I say, you have the problem if more people show up to restrict them from coming into the fire station to vote until the other people move out. You know. And also the people who may be reluctant to uh, be in this close proximity right. to the ballot clerks. Right. So, <laughs> you also have the firemen in the station. That's yeah. right, you know. So we could very easily exceed whatever uh, limit the, the governor or whoever sets on the amount of people to be present at any given time. Okay. 
Okay. Well, here's what I'd suggest that we do. Here's what I'd yes, suggest. go ahead. I, I would suggest, and I can I can work up some language um, that I think should come from the moderator and as a, endorsed by the commissioners, that you are, in a, and you guys tell me if I'm not, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you tell me if I'm wrong, that you have determined on a, on a conceptual level that it, it is li very highly likely that a decision will be made on March 26th to postpone the voting and to postpone the business section of the meeting on March 27th. And that you are, um, because the information is evolving so quickly, you do not have any um, any sense at this time as to when, if the if the meetings are postponed, when it would be rescheduled to. But that that information would be included in any decision that's going to be issued on March 26th, along with further instructions for um, obtaining absentee ballots, etc., etc., etc. And I think that's probably the best you can do for right now. Yeah, I, I just mean, have one thought yep. that you add that we could not make that decision prior to March 26th yes, I, I think that's, yes, I think that's an excellent idea, Bob. I think that's an excellent idea that, that you know, while the commissioners provided input to the to the moderator and the mo moderator is certainly of the inclination um, to, to proceed with the postponement, <coughs> that the actual final decision cannot be made under New Hampshire statute until March 26th. Until March 26th. Right. Right. Okay. And then, but I, I, this is Marina. But I do think if we do that, we need to, like you say, say to people the likelihood, yeah, of this because they're going to say, well, "How am I going to know March 26?" So I think we need to. Right. This is difficult. Well, yeah. and okay. I, I think that what we need to do is to tell them that there's going to be a likelihood, and that they should pay close attention to the to the village website and other um, other uh, areas where the notices are typically posted. I mean, that's, that's, you know, some of it's got to be on them, too. You're giving them a heads up that this is likely going to happen. But yep. then, the, then these, they've got to take some responsibility for following through on March 26th. Well, if, if, <coughs> are we going to make a statement that there is a possibility of April 7th now? No. Okay. No, I don't right. think you want to do that because, okay, got it. you know, yeah. it, 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 <coughs> frankly, it could happen between now and uh, March 26th. I may have more information to give to you. I mean, one of the things yeah. that I could very easily see happening is that the Attorney General could issue a ruling stating that, I mean, re remember, we're only talking about April 7th right. because of the fact that that's the deadline under the statute. If, if that deadline is relaxed by the attorney general's office, then you could you could decide on your own to push it out further. Then you might want to decide to combine the two um, aspects of the meeting and have and reschedule everything to one meeting. At, at which point you vote um, and do the business session. Yeah. Sharon and Chuck, uh, I'd be in favor of having both the voting and the budget discussion on the same the same day. You know, let's get it all done at the same time. Mm -hmm. Only because, let, let, you know, we talked originally of having uh, the voting on one day and then having the uh, voting on the warrant articles uh, at a, a different day in, in, our, in our meeting room. My concern with that would be if there were two very few people that showed up for the actual voting on the budget. Yep. <laughs> and, you know, let's say, let's say we're, you know, we're all sitting there and there's, there's five people that come in yeah. to vote on a close to a million dollar budget and right. there could right. be some problem there, I would think. Yeah. Yeah. So I would rather have it a wide open opportunity for everybody at the same time, you know, to do the, everything at the same time. My, again, I'll just reiterate. Yeah. My concern would be if we sat down at a separate meeting just to discuss the money article, that there would be very few people that would show up, and there might be some controversy over that. Yeah, that I, six I think people. Yeah. Or, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. I, I, I think your your point's very well taken, um, Richard. And I, and I, because if nothing else, it'll be the perception that that you know there wasn't really a. a, a 
a, a full endorsement of the budget or something like that. But that's what I'm saying. I, you know, I, I, you know this, there were only six people there, and they all voted had a million dollar yeah, budget, yeah. and four and three of those people were the commissioners. That's, you know? why, I, that's so. why I think that pro probably at this point, the less that's publicly, or, or the less that we put in about possibly bifurcating the meeting and all this other stuff, people's heads are going to explode if we start talking yeah. about that. Yeah. So I think that what we just say is that. Um, you know, we are awaiting the statutory time frame in which we can make a final decision, and at that time, a decision will also be made as to when to reschedule um, the proceedings, and just and, and and that and that will be based. What? The decision as to when will be pay, be based um, to probably to a large extent on further information and instruction given by the attorney general's office and other government officials, because I think that's true. Yeah. Is the voting part of it statutorily restricted time-wise, unlike the meeting for the budget? Yes, that's correct. So it may be... My concern with the not pushing the budget part of it significantly out is we may be asking people to approve something, not knowing whether any of those activities will be allowed to go on. Right. Right. Which is normal. I mean, if we don't spend yeah. it, we back into the, uh, into the into back to the tax base. Yeah, I mean, Bob, I, I think that, you know, I understand your point, and there probably is going to be some anxiety on the part of the voters, but at the same time, if you don't make that appropriation, then your hands are completely tied. Yeah, I understand. I'm not saying you don't make the appropriation. I'm questioning the timing. Say we're in the, the full more of this crisis in April, mm -hmm. and we have the meeting on the budget, A, will anyone show up, and B, as Richard suggests, will three people decline the budget or approve the budget? And someone's going to say, why am I voting for this June event when it's probably going to be not allowed to happen because of the federal estate regulation? Well, Bob, I think, I, yeah, I mean, and I think you're going to have to, uh, you know, that's why... It's, it's, I don't think that there's any way that you can even pick a date at this point as to when this might happen. And you know what? I suppose, in theory, it's possible that you have, may need to reschedule this meeting more than once. Exactly. Mm, you don't yeah. know that. Okay. Uh, Sharon, as far as uh, this absentee business goes, if, in fact, we are going to be postponing on the 26th and we're going to tell everybody... Are we going to do, we can't do absentee bells, can we? I mean, when when would they be in, We, you know, if we're, not, if we're going to keep postponing, how can we do absentee bells? Well, I, I, I don't know whether you're going to have to keep postponing. I think the question is, um, and I think that that's been touched upon to some extent. Let me just see here. You should be able to do them until the day, the day of the voting. Yeah. yeah, I have a feeling, and I can check on this. I have a feeling that what would happen is that you would just collect whatever it gets submitted and hang on to them. Okay. Hang on to the, hang on to them until the actual yeah. day of the right. vote. Right. Right. Okay. Right. Right. All right. 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 So they could be done any time, really, and uh, if they want, and then we hold on to them until we actually do this. Pretty much. I mean, again, huh. this is this is. Uh, listen, I I I think what's going to have to happen here is that I'm going to have to give you you guys sort of. Um, you know, late-breaking news developments, because all this stuff yeah. is changing all the time. And and I mm -hmm. think that one of the things that's going to be required is that I'm going to need to get you more information about the logistics of doing all this absentee ballot stuff in this, yeah. this crazy time. I mean, it, it may it may be that the Secretary of State's office is going to instruct everyone to just try to, to follow the same basic format that they would for a regular meeting, but, I, you know, I just don't know. Right. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'll get confirmation, but my, my assumption is that what you do for any any absentee ballots that come in the mail, say, with people who think that there's going to be a meeting on March 27th, you just hang on to them. And then they, then yeah. they get opened when the actual meeting, when, when, the, both, when the votes are actually counted. Okay. Good. Language be put in that says absentee ballots will be continue to be accepted until the actual date of the meeting. I think that we would do that when we make a final decision. I, do, I don't know. Final decision of what? 
uh, I think of the uh, the actual meeting date. No, 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 right? no, no. no. Rem remember, we nope. can't, we can't, we can't indicate at this point in time that, that the the meeting on March twenty seventh is going to be postponed. I think that what we could do, though, to Bob's point, is on March twenty sixth. Let's say Richard does make his his decision oh. to postpone the meeting on March twenty seventh. We could, at that point, indicate that if anyone wants to submit an absentee ballot and they have not done so already, that they can go ahead and continue to submit them in anticipation of the time, you know, when the meeting actually gets rescheduled. Okay. Okay. So for the time being, we're up in the air until March 26th, right? Correct. Except, so, except for the fact that I'm gonna I'm gonna generate a writing which I'd like all you guys to look at ASAP because um, I think mm -hmm. we should get that posted like early next week. Um, like they're probably can you, text that, can you text that writing to Richard as he doesn't have email? <laughs> Just, Chuck, why don't you get a, make a copy and I'll go over and pick it up. <laughs> um, Richard, what I can do, what I can do yep. is. Um, you know, some of the younger people here who are more clever than I when it comes to this kind of stuff <laughs> is that I can send you a PDF of a document which you can then open up on your uh, phone screen. Do you have a smartphone, Richard? No, that's the point. I have a little flip phone. I do not have a smartphone. I'm, I'm sorry, people. You know, I, I have just not kept up with everything, and uh, I'm just sorry that I haven't. So I, I guess we have to make some arrangement somewhere, or even just send, send a copy to Chuck, and I'll go and pick it up. Yeah. If that's yeah. Yes. Okay. Chuck, is, just print is a, that print all right, Chuck? Print off a copy and um and 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 show it to Richard. I just want to make sure everybody is in agreement on the language. Right. 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 Okay. Um, is that all right, Chuck? Yeah, sounds good. Okay. I'll get it running. To, what time are you going to have this? I don't know. I've I got some other stuff that I need to do, but I, I will get that done, and, and it may even go out over the weekend. Oh, that's fine, because I'm not going to be back. I, I have to leave to Salem this afternoon, so that's so that's fine. I can just get it tomorrow to him or whatever. Yeah. Or whatever. Get it back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Right. Yeah. Now, now, Sharon, you mentioned initially uh, that there has to be some communication <coughs> with the Attorney General on this postponement. That's correct. Under the statute, that's correct. No, how do we go about doing that? Well, well we is going to be you. Um, oh, okay. And and that's going to be done. Um, you, well, first of all, in terms of the actual vote itself, it's the Secretary of State's office. I, I misspoke before when I said that. And you have to notice notify the Secretary of State by phone um, within two hours. So in other words, let's say you decide at 10 in the morning on March 26th that you're going to postpone the vote. You need to, by noon of that day, call up the Secretary of State's office. Uh, do you have a Do you have a phone number for them? In, in, yes, in yes, materials? I do. Okay, so that's yeah, what you do with yeah. the, with that. And then, um, with regard to the business section, uh, blah 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 blah. Hang on, just a second. John, maybe you don't need to notify the attorney generals, and maybe I maybe I misspoke on that. I think it's just the secretary of state's office for the vote. I won't hurt to tell the attorney general, anyways. Yeah. Or maybe when he calls the uh, secretary of state, he can ask her. Oh, yeah. Right, right. Well, well, doesn't Steve send uh, information to the Attorney General as to the outcome of that budget? No, 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 no. I think you're thinking, Richard, what you're thinking of is the... Um, DRA. The, the, the DRA. Oh, all right, all right. There's no, there's no connection b between that and uh, right. our budget, right? Right. But oh, just, okay. Just so I'm you asked that right. question, too, just for Maureen's sake, I know, I know uh, uh, Bob and Chuck and I had talked about this, too. What will happen is that in terms of Steve having to file those MS-7 forms with the DRA, right. that will take place. Um, you Basically, the deadline to do that just gets moved out to whenever you have the business section. So that's, oh, okay. that is the all only right. thing that Steve is going to have to do in this whole exercise. 
And and Richard, I mean, I'll I'll work with you to make sure that the proper that you know you give the proper notices to the proper people at at the proper time. So, okay. Well, but it, but it right. does technically have to come from you because by statute you're the decision maker. It's just that right. you get you get input from from the governing body. Okay. All right. So we where everything is kind of up in the air until uh, the twenty sixth, right? Correct. Okay. Well, it is up in the air, but again, I think, well, I think you want to give the message to people. I think you oh, want yeah, to give, definitely. give the message to people that you have met and, and you've received input from the from the, the commissioners and that the, the strong likelihood is, is that it's going to be postponed, but that you can't make the final decision by law until the day before. Right. That, that's now, as, far as, getting, as far as getting the word out, uh, Chuck, you we have a meet, there's a meeting on the 23rd. Can you at, at that meeting uh, put out some information? Oh, no, 23rd of what? Meeting to have the commission. That I think that's going to be canceled. It's going to be all oh, your your regular the uh, selectmen's meeting is going to be canceled. Oh, that one. No, no, I can bring it out on that one. Yeah. Well, that's well, what I'm saying. Say there's going to be an announcement on the, the 26th. So I'll definitely do that. Right. Okay. That's a great point, Richard. So now the yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, as far as getting the word out to people, I think the the selectmen's meeting is a good opportunity. And since we have Chuck sitting right there, right? Yep. Yep. No, I think that's a great okay. idea. I, I planned on that anyway. So. No, that's a great idea. All Richard. right. Okay. For Richard, I have a confession. I have a flip phone too. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> hey, you're gonna take care of the elderly. You know, if the elderly want their flip phones, you <laughs> yeah. let them keep let them keep their flip phones. That's right. Yeah. Sign us up for me. I have you. a smartphone, <laughs> and I'm elderly too. <laughs> well, just make sure whatever kind of phone you have that you clean it on a regular basis. Yes, yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah. Of, of, yeah. of germs. Well, I know. All okay, right. so so we're, so you're going to send out. This is Maureen again. You're going to send out a, a, a notice that with with the correct wording that we can look at. Correct. Is this going to be posted somewhere? Yes, I would recommend yeah. that what you do is that once once we agree on the language, yeah, that then that be posted at a, the same place that you would post like commissioners' notices, um, yeah. and that you post it on the website so that the word will start to filter out. I'll yeah. take care of all that, Maureen. Uh, Chuck, what, uh, just to review, the Lighthouse Town Office is Patriots Corner, and what's the other one? Lighthouse Town, um, those things. What? And, and our website. Oh, okay. Just the four of those? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Would it be worth putting a note, if it, assuming it's canceled, putting a notice in that Friday's Hampton Union? which would be the day of the original uh, voting. Yeah, well, that's what we, we'll, we'll know on the Thursday. Hopefully we can get, get it in. Um, yeah, that's an issue. That's the thing. We yeah. can't really announce anything until the Thursday, so. Um, Could we notify the paper and tell them to hold it in case it's changed, but to alert them? Because uh, it's like a 98% probability it's going to be mm. continued. You, can't, you won't get anything in the paper if you tell them Thursday afternoon. Well, the only the only thing I'd say is that you better be damn sure that that the person that you speak to is reliable. The last thing you'd want to do is to have have a have a have the fake news come out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll go neutral in politics. Right. So the the, uh, the letter that you're going to be sharing, uh, the letter that you're going to be sent to Steve uh, to uh, Chuck uh, is will. Some of the content will be information that I will be passing on to the Secretary of State. Is that correct? No, no, you won't. That, that's premature. When 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 we get to the point of the 26th, then I'll generate another another oh, piece right. of okay. information right. that you can then share with the Secretary of State's office. Uh, okay, great. All yeah. right. All right. So I think we're All good. Right. All right. So. so Hello, hello, Karen. Yeah, we, we're going to set something. We're going to set something up now for a conference call on twenty sixth, or which way we're going to go with this. I, th I think that's probably a good idea. You might as well pick a time now. 
Sharon. Yes, Sharon. Can you, can you hear me? This is this is Steve LeBranch talking. Oh, hi, Steve. Hi. Steve, you've been there the whole time. Oh, this yeah. is early for you. Yeah, oh, most certainly. Um, I wonder if you might contact DRA and find out how how and how we're going to post this, and then how I am going to deal with this because the, this has all been legally posted um, for the 27th. Correct. And the, the warrant at the last meeting that the village district had, um, we had to have the, uh, it was signed, the warrant had to be signed, and then I, not I notarized it, and then it was posted at the several places that have been talked about. Yeah. And I'm wondering how that's going to be dealt with. Um, what is, what's DRA going to request from me as far as reposting it? How many days does it have before does it have to be reposted? Because the, those documents, there's an MS-737 that was, um, it, it's from the budget committee mm -hmm. um, that was signed by a majority of the budget committee mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in order to even create the budget. Right, um, right. And then the warrants articles themselves that had to be posted. But all of that had to be posted by so many days before right. the actual meeting. So, right, right. You know, talking about April, um, April 7th, April 7th is, that's not, that's not a full two weeks. Right, and, and, and Steve, I, I think, and I won't get confirmation, but I think that the simple answer to this is that I, I, unless there's some requirement to simply affirm that the all the information previously posted is still accurate and still in play, I don't think you're going to need to do anything. The statute talks about the fact that if um, a meeting is postponed in the fashion the way that we've been describing, that all of the original dates and so forth um, are still going to be considered valid, which to me suggests that there's nothing that would need to be done, certainly to repost the warrant with a new date or anything like that. You just bring it forward in connection with the, the notice of the rescheduled date and time of the new meeting. But I can certainly, for your peace of mind, I can I can get confirmation that there's no no additional uh, work that would need to be done in the way of reposting the budget or reposting the the the, uh, the, the warrant or anything along those lines. Okay, and the other thing is that uh, I'm hearing is does Uda, the clerk, um, how many how many absentee ballots does she have printed? Because normally I would say that she probably gets two or three or no more six requests for absentee ballots. Does she have presently printed uh, 50 absentee ballots or 60 or 70 or whatever number? Well, the, the absentee are identical to our regular ballots, Steve. There's no difference. So they're printed, Steve, and then she just sends it out if they get a request for it. She has a special envelope that she sends that out in. It's not just done in the regular envelope. That's correct. No, but I mean, I mean, the ballot itself does not indicate whether it's absentee or regular. It's uh, information that she sends out to notify the people that are they're sending by absentee ballot. I think the question Steve right. is asking is whether or not Uda has enough. Um, well, I'm going to I'm going to call her. Yeah. Because I would assume that by this time she has the ballots printed up. And I'll just tell Udo, look, if you have any requests for absentee ballots, just send them out. And ha just ask people to return them as soon as possible. And we will notify you or we will publicize what the, when the deadline is going to be. You know, if you can just continue sending out any requests, it's just a matter of what, what the time frame of getting them back. Yeah, the ballots have all been printed. I already checked with Udo on that. Okay. But the question I have, the question I have is, is she prepared? Because if she has to send out 50 ballots, does she have the proper envelopes? And just to, I would just say to make sure that Buddha, and that that's something you better check with her today. Be prepared that if you're gonna, 
if you're going to do a format where um, you know people might all do absentee ballots, then they sure that she has you know everything that's necessary to do just that. So that's another a party that needs to be involved in this. Oh, definitely, yeah. Right, but Steve, I I, want, I just want to reiterate here. Things are very much fluid, and no decision has been made <coughs> about really about anything, let alone that it's going to be rescheduled well, I, to April 7th. So I just want to be very clear I mean, that if there's going to be any kind of discussion about any of this sort of thing publicly, I don't want to have that date floated around. No. Is did, did you get the whole meeting, or did you just come in late? Oh, I, 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 I phoned in at uh, 945. The, okay. The, uh, right. the thing, thing is that at this point... And they're saying that in the next 10 days to two weeks, there's going to be a sort of like a tidal wave um, that's going to be arising. Right now, this is just the beginning of this. And right, and then we have to wait. So let's not discuss at all the media stuff that's going on. Well, let's just wait. No, I'm not talking and we'll see what happens on the 26th. About, yeah, I'm talking about projections and, you know, making some plans. And so, yeah, we'll, no decision will be made, obviously, until the 26th. I, I understand what uh, Sharon was talking about, but it, it may very well be that this has to be pushed out even further. And, you know, you're talking a week or two weeks. It could be pushed out for two months. That's possible. And that's a possibility, you know? Yep. So, uh, yeah. So at this point... Nobody knows because, you know, we really don't know what we're dealing with here. So, so. Oh, okay, that's, that's all I wanted to mention. Thank can, you. Okay. Can I speak, please? Sure. All right. I, 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 I'm not the chair. What am I saying? I'll be quiet. <laughs> Yeah, this is, uh, this is, uh, Tim, uh, or excuse me, uh, this is... Who's next? Who's up? Right? <laughs> yeah, this, people this, identify themselves, please. This is Timothy Citizen Jones, your favorite citizen of Hampton Beach Village District. And I would like to make two observations. What is uh, observation number one is the, uh, executive orders that you've been referencing, as far as I know, are not mandatory. Secondly... Uh, the proclamation that the location is unsafe is unsupported by reality. The very location of the fire station, in fact, will be open on that day. So obviously it is not unsafe. The location is not unsafe. Thank you. Uh, we will make that decision on the 26th. No, we will not, Chuck. I know you think you're God. But Richard Rainier is God on this one. And I'm talking to Richard Rainier, the only one that makes a decision on this point. And the fire station is not unsafe. The location is not unsafe. The statute requires that the moderator determine the location be unsafe. And the location is not unsafe and will not be unsafe on the 27th. Well, he'll make that, he'll make that decision on the 26th. He will make that decision when he makes it, not when you do. Tim? Yeah, Mrs. Maureen. Um, whether the, um, the place is unsafe, it's still mandated by the governor that we cannot have more than 50 people, correct? No, it is not mandated. It is, in fact, it is, now, it is, a, it is not a mandated no. executive order. And, in fact, the statute requires that the location be determined to be unsafe, and there's nothing about that location that is unsafe. Okay, yeah, but what about the fact that we can't have more than... This is Richard. There is no question about whether the building itself is unsafe. The determination of whether or not we are allowed to have a, a, a certain number of people in that building in a given time is questionable. We don't know if it's 10. We don't know if it's 50. So until we know that, definitely our decision or my decision is that it would be more prudent to postpone the meeting of the 27th. That's my decision. Well, that's your decision, and you're certainly empowered to make it, Richard, and I certainly respect it, I, and I hope you would respect my disagreement with it. The location is not unsafe, in my opinion. Well, you're using a term of, this of a location being unsafe, and I disagree with that terminology. Nobody is questioning the unsafeness of the fire station. We're questioning whether or not we have the... Uh, uh, authority or whatever you want to call it to hold a meeting 
in excess of a number that is being established by the state. If they say it's, it's more than 10 people, then yes, we cannot hold a meeting because of the number of people that may be required to be there. So I'm not... Uh, well, I appreciate I'm that, Richard. Of ...your assertion of the building being unsafe. Yeah, apparently you agree with me the building is not unsafe. My, my concern is the, the people coming into that building and having close proximity with other people who may be there. That is my concern. I appreciate that concern, and I share that concern. That I share that concern. However, the statute requires the determination be made solely on the basis of whether the location itself is safe. And you have, you have now proclaimed that it is safe. That you're making a decision on some other criteria, and that's fine. If you want to make the decision, that's your that's your, your authority. I'm not objecting. I'm simply making my opinion known. That's all. All right, and I'm, you're entitled to your opinion. But the, the decision is mine that the holding the meeting on the 27th is not a, is not prudent. Chuck, as the chairman, you may want to ask if anybody else um, if anybody else is present that wants to make any comments. And if, and if so, to identify themselves. Is there anybody out there that wants to make any comments? And please identify yourself. I, I want to make one more comment, Chuck. This is Steve LaBranch. Yeah. Um, Richard, Richard, you're going to make a determination. You're not looking at the, whether the building is safe or not. Um, and of course, you can't. I would have to say the building inspector would decide if the building is unsafe for some reason. Um, but you're looking, uh, Richard, you're going to make a determination. You're looking for the safety of the legislative body. Oh, the public. Body. In other words, the citizens. Right. You're looking at the safety of the people. I think that that is, I understand what the statute might say, but your determination is based on a situation that none of us have, have uh, incurred before in our lives, and that is some very unusual situation that's going on at this point with that virus, and um, I, I think that, as, as Sharon pointed out, it's very dynamic at this point, very fluid, it's the, day, the rules are changing day by day, almost hour by hour, so the best we can do right now is what talked about and planned, but everything is changing so quickly that, um, you know, there's nothing more we can do at this point, right today, other than what you've discussed. I would like to be included, Sharon, on the, um, well, you're, you're right now, well, it's a public meeting. That's correct. Public meeting. And so any, anything, any documents that are created should be made available to the public if they request them. And I'm requesting that I be kept in the loop as far as, you know, if you send something out in the email, um, that I could, I would be able to look at it as well. My, my, um, my, my involvement in this is in the fact that I'm the one that, you know, deals with the DRA and, um, and just for that fact alone, I just want to make sure that I'm, you know, included in the loop as to what's going on. I'm very happy that I happened to come across the Facebook uh, listing last night. Otherwise, I wouldn't even have known that you were having this meeting, you know, and the phone number was also properly listed in that, um, in that particular Facebook um, posting. And so I'm, I'm glad of that because... This, this has been enlightening. Everybody has concerns, and you know nobody knows what's going to happen tomorrow. So, thank you very much. All right, uh, this is Richard again. Uh, are we going to set up a time for another conference call on the twenty-sixth? I think you should. I think that'd be prudent. Okay. We'll figure that out. I'll post at the same thing. Oh, all right, okay. A little, a little premature there. Do we want to do 10 o'clock on the 26th? That's fine with me. I don't know about it's anybody okay else. okay with me. Fine. Is it all right with you, Sharon? You're the one with the uh, technology. I'm the one with the technolo technology. 
Uh, yeah. yeah, that's that's fine. I'll I'll reserve the the conference call for that time. Okay. The so same time, same channel, and all the numbers will be the same. That's correct. So, uh, so we'll March March twenty sixth, March twenty sixth at ten a.m. Right? Yeah. Yep. All right. And just to make a couple more points, uh, I'm going to call Uda and clarify on the situation with the absentee ballots. And also going to call Jim Higgins and tell him that the meeting of the 27th, Jim is, as you know, is the uh, supervisor of the checklist. I'll notify him that the meeting has been postponed and he'll be informed of... I would call Eileen, too. This is Maureen, Richard. Yeah. I would call Eileen as well. No, well, I'm going to try, yeah, I'll try both. I'll call Eileen and Jim. Yeah, Richard, be very careful. Don't say that it's postponed. Oh, all right. That's uh, what, 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 term, what terminology would you... Uh, well, you haven't made the decision yet. You can't make the decision. I mean, all right, okay. You know, it's what we discussed before, that, that you are going to be very likely to make a decision on March 26th. Oh. But you can't make that formal decision yet because you're not allowed to by statute. Oh, all right. That's right. I got to wait a day before. All right. Well, I was, maybe I'll just hold off until, until the 30th. I just don't want these people to be, uh, you know, hanging by the thread. No one is thinking that they're going to be coming uh, to the meeting on the 27th. I think, I think it would be appropriate and, and really, um, you, you, it's, it, I think you should call Jimmy Higgins and give him right. a heads up that this is what is likely to happen. I just want you to be All very right. careful okay. to not say that a decision has been made because it, it hasn't been and you can't legally make a decision yet. So I don't want to have misinformation okay. out there. All right, so Sharon, this is Maureen. On the 26th, um, should we post a sign, if indeed it's canceled, that it is canceled until further notice on the at the fire station? Well, you would post a sign, but it would mm. you would post it to indicate when it's going to be rescheduled too. We'll have the we'll have the date on the twenty sixth. Right. We'll help okay. walk from the attorney general or the secretary of state or whoever. But a that. sign should go up at the fire station. In case That's correct. Was thinking about That's coming correct. Up. Okay. That's correct. All right. Yeah, because I got you know I got four ballot clerks too that yeah. are in, in, uh, thinking of coming on the twenty seventh. So again, I'll just inform them that it is likely that it's going to be postponed. Right? Or I'll just notify. I'll wait. Don't. I'll notify them on the twenty sixth. Is that right, Sharon? Which will you tell me? If if or if, if if I were one of the ballot clerks. Yeah. I would probably be feeling a little anxious, and I would want to right. hear from somebody at the district level as to what it is right. that's being discussed and might happen. So I would make the call. Well, and you're talking about me, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and okay. talk about the right. likelihood, not the fact. The, the likelihood right. that it may be postponed. I think you're right. I think these people need to be informed that the possibility is there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything Alrighty. else? Any other business? Uh, one other thing, Chuck. One other thing from Steve LaBranch. Um, yeah. You might want to give Richard Sawyer a heads up. And perhaps the village... That's all in the work, with... Stephen. Oh, okay. As far as using those electronic signs? Yeah. The electronic signs. Talk. Yeah. If, if, if when, we, when the decision is made as to when it's actually going to take place, that you could strategically put those electronic signs up <coughs> and so to, to inform people because you certainly want to make sure that uh, people know when the meeting will take place and when they can vote right yeah but that's not going to happen right now but just give me a heads up and, and yep that's what I see yeah okay mm -hmm. good thank you all right and on that note, can I can I close the meeting at 11:08? Jim, are we done? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So I have a motion to close the meeting at 11:08. Do I have a motion? I'll move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, bye. Bye. Bye.